All right, I screwed up the first time. Started talking, didn't delete the memory. I only have like a eight megabyte card or some stupid shit. It's stupid. Anyway, um, this video is pretty much for all you visual learners out there. This is take two. Uh, you know, like you could really get to this point of working on your own vehicle with, you know, not that much money. If you have enough friends and enough people willing to help you out, you know. Um, the engine stand, as you see, it's a lovely engine stand. And the cardboard was all pretty much, you know, zero expense to me. I brought the engine stand from my foster brother. We used to own our own shop. Crappy shop. Don't tell anybody. But, uh, and the engine hoist I also bought from my foster brother. Uh, you know, like, you can pretty much get where you're trying to go. Uh, just a little bit of ingenuity. I probably only have a couple of hundred bucks in tools. You know, uh, I have a cheap ass camera, you know, freaking. You know, like, I've accumulated all this probably over a year, but for the most part, you know, like, you can, you can make do without a whole bunch. So, I figured I let you, uh, visual learners see, uh, exactly how this is done. Uh, I have so much gloves on right now, sorry. They're cheap, but they work. Um, I'm going to be taking off the rod bearings right now. And I figured I'd let you guys actually watch me do that instead of just hear me talk about it. You know, that's, that's one thing that aggravates me the most when you when people talk about how to do something, they don't show you how to do something. So, I'm gonna show you how to do it. Breaker bar. These two are already loose. I started uh, doing this without me doing it. And then I figured, you know, there's people who are gonna wanna see. So, now I'm videoing it. So these two are already loose. Uh, number two, number three, I'll just show you guys. And these don't really matter as much as the main bearings. Or I already actually have those busted loose, but I mean, you can pretty much take these off. And it's not very hard to do when you have breaker bar. I suggest getting a breaker bar if you don't have one. It makes life a hell of a lot easier. But pretty much bust those loose. And then you take your. 13 millimeter wrench for a Ford PDH 1.9 HO. Loosen them up. And there's the ridge in there. You're really supposed to take the ridge off. They recommend taking the ridge off. But realistically, uh, they didn't feel like they make it steam. Yeah. Now, one thing I keep hearing about, and you guys are going to be going through this with me, is how hard it is to get these con rods off. And they've been under for a while. This car has about 130,000 miles. So we're going to see just how true that statement is. That was all. Ah, shit. Yeah, you know, that's, <laughs> that's not coming off. So, gentle tap, like a uh, half inch socket right here. You can shock it a little bit. It feels a little bit. Tapping gently, I'm not tapping hard. Tapping enough to try to get it to work the way I want it to. Get it to work itself off. See if I uh, lose the crank around a little bit. Mm -hmm. There we go. And that's the bottom half right there. I'm not sure if you guys can see it. That's it. My sandwich gloves. And now we have to get the actual piston itself out. And what we're going to use is the back side of the hammer. Because it works good. It's going to be good here. I can argue with a century old technology here. Put your hand underneath the bottom to make sure that you don't smack it on the ground. You know? They really don't like that. Uh, working sideways. You, know, you don't want to fuck up your crank either. I actually intend to reuse my crank, so that's how it's going to be. And, the number two piston is out. The piston rings, wow, the piston rings actually look really fucking good on this. Can you see that? Look really good. Um, they're not bent. 
their space apart correctly. So yeah, the pistons actually look really good in this. Uh-oh. You see where it's kind of rubbing on the sidewall right there a little bit. But for the most part, that's a lot better than what I assume. This is from high revs. You can see how it's all dark here and kind of light here. It's from rubbing against the cylinder wall. That's from high revs. These cars don't like high revs. They like to stay around 6,500 tops. Tops, okay. Um, <laughs> I constantly wrapped the piss out of mine, and it didn't really complain at all either. But that's the piston. After you're done, take your uh, Conrod bottom, <laughs> put it back on, and put the bolts back on so you don't lose them. Like I may have just done. So this way, you have your uh, piston for your setup. I'm not putting these back into the same block, so this doesn't apply to me, but I did it anyway just to satisfy my own OCD. And that is actually marked con rods with a uh, punch. And this is number two. You can't see it there because it's so damn dirty. When I clean it off, you'll definitely be able to see it. But there's actually two marks. All right? Oh, there's one mark there. And another mark on the other side. But that's to let me know that it's number two. Yeah. And I think it actually has a mark on there. I can't tell. We'll be able to tell it. Yeah, it does. It actually has a number two right there. You can't see it because it's dirty and oily. But I'll show you guys after I clean these up. So we'll take the rest of these out. And then we'll talk some more. Show you guys a little bit more of this. I'll show you guys the uh, con rods too, so you guys get a good idea how to do both.